Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Chris. It's your boy, Chris. It's another amazing episode of Financial Patient. This channel is all about making money. It's all about saving money. It's all about building generational wealth. And it's all about financially emancipating yourself from generational poverty. So today, guys, it's the 4th of July. So I'm about to go ahead and take this shirt and tie off. I'll go ahead and get ready to start cooking some uh, barbecue chicken, some barbecue, and getting ready for the uh, 4th of July festivities and for the fireworks. But uh, I was actually kind of sat down and started thinking about a couple of things about America that... Um, do make this country uh, pretty cool and make this country, I would say, amazing to live in. And uh, a lot of times, guys, uh, I know uh, just being a minority, being Black American, there are a lot of things about the country and the history of this country that do kind of get on my nerves and piss me off. I mean, everything from slavery to the genocide of 100 million Native Americans, mass incarceration, Jim Crow, uh, the war on drugs, uh, the forced uh, migration of uh, Asian Americans during World War II, uh, police shootings as far as Alton Sterling, Walter Scott, things of that nature. So there are a lot of things in America that uh, can kind of tick you off if you um, are of a certain uh, background or whatever. But I won't lie though, there are also a lot of things about this country though that are pretty cool. And sometimes it's really easy to uh, forget the fact that there are people literally killing themselves to get into this country in regards to uh, certain things, um, in regards to some of the freedoms that we do enjoy over here. So for this particular video, guys, I wanna talk about, because it's the 4th of July, I wanna talk about some of the honestly very, very cool things about America that unless if you're an American like myself who has traveled and lived abroad, or unless if you pretty much um, don't really uh, have a lot of friends that are immigrants, there are a lot of really cool things about America that do kind of make us relatively unique in a very good way compared to other countries around the world. So the first and the foremost is that as a loud and proud American, because I am proud of, of a country and I love my country, even though there is an element, unfortunately, of America I re recognize that would never love me. Um, as a loud and proud American, there are many things in this country that are pretty cool. So the first thing that I honestly love about America is that in this country, literally all you need to do to be successful is to work hard and get a good education. Simple as that. I know that may sound kind of uh, kind of sound kind of basic, and yes, I do understand that in countries like Canada, Sweden, Germany, uh, the United Kingdom, um, Spain, Portugal, it's the same thing. If you work hard in those countries and you uh, take your school seriously, uh, you can become anything you want. But in America, that's one of the things that I love about this country. That generally speaking, if you want to become a medical doctor, the only thing stopping you from becoming a medical doctor is you. If you want to become a lawyer, the only thing stopping you from becoming a lawyer is you. If you want to become an engineer. Only thing in America stopping you from becoming a mechanical engineer like myself is you. So in America, you can literally become anything that you want. All you have to do is study really hard, pretty much, and uh, put in the work and it's gonna come your way. Uh, another really cool thing I love about the United States is that in literally one generation, I actually say this in a previous video, in another video, in one generation in America, you can go from living in the slums and the housing projects to being a billionaire. If you don't believe me, look look at LeBron James. Look no further than LeBron. That man grew up, basically, his mother had him when she was 16. She was in and out of the projects, in and out of the hood. Um, basically, he did not, he never knew his biological father. And in one generation, uh, basically, LeBron James became a billionaire. And what I find very cool about LeBron is that he's only he's only made $375 million basically playing basketball. The remaining $625 million, he basically made as an entrepreneur. So it's pretty dope. So in America, literally in one generation, you can become, uh, you can go from um, being dirt poor to being a billionaire. Another really dope thing about America is that public school here is free. Now I do recognize, uh, obviously uh, for full, full disclosure, I basically was a uh, public school my entire life. I had schools that I went to where I had to walk through metal detectors, where I got patted down for drugs, where uh, the cops basically stood in the halls. I did go to schools like that. But um, I was public school education my entire way. And 20 some odd years later, I'm a mechanical engineer. I have an MBA, uh, I have an MBA. I talk finance and basically I have built literally billion dollar buildings for some extremely um some extremely uh unique clients so uh, in america public schools are free and it wasn't until i started hanging out with people from haiti from uh countries such as darfur countries uh, people who were from cameroon people from like sudan people from uh, people who are from remote parts of china that uh people in the caribbean places like that and a lot of countries people public school is not free Literally, if you try to go to school in certain parts of this world, uh, basically where public school is not free, they will literally throw you out of the door pretty much because you're not wearing um, the school uniform. If you can't afford the books, say, get out of here. You're too poor. Go, go, to, go work. In America, even though I know our public school system does leave a lot to be desired in certain ways, public school is legitimately free here. And unless if you, uh, like myself, you married an immigrant or you hang out with a lot of immigrants, uh, it is kind of somewhat of a shocker to a lot of Americans when they realize that in other countries, public school is not free. And I honestly think that's one reason why when immigrants come to this country, they take school so seriously because a lot of them come from countries where school is not free. And as a result, they realize basically the blessings that come with that. Um, another cool thing about America is that no matter how poor you are, 
Step four, no matter how poor you are, you can invest in what I like to call the three pillars of uh, building generational wealth. So anyone knows this channel knows that I pretty much push three pillars as far as what anybody, the poor, the middle class can do to build generational wealth. First pillar being the 401k. If you work for a company who has a 401k match, you need to be investing into that 401k match every single paycheck period. If your company basically matches 8%, 8% of your paycheck needs to go in there. Why? It's for a very simple reason. It's free money and it's very stupid, very dumb to turn on free money. Secondly, the second pillar is the Roth IRA. Everybody should basically be uh, investing in the Roth IRA or whatever because it grows tax-free. If you're under four, if you're under 50 or whatever, you should be putting $6,000 a year or $500 every month into your Roth IRA. And if you're over 50, you should be putting, if you're over 49, um, you should be putting basically $7,000 into your Roth IRA. Um, and the third and the third pillar rather for um building generational wealth is the hsa account so the cool thing about america is that uh there are three pillars that this country affords you to build generational wealth the, the uh, one being the 401k two being the roth ira and three being the hsa account and it's other socialistic countries uh such as uh for instance cuba that's not necessarily the case um so in america america offers you anybody from any walk of life pretty much a chance to build generational wealth and on a side note to that uh, if you put if you have ten thousand dollars into your 401k by the time you were 25 years old you were literally guaranteed to have over a million top a million dollars by the time you're 65. so think about that for a minute so once again ten thousand dollars in a Roth there by the time you're 25 you're guaranteed to have over a million dollars next in america no matter how poor you are you can invest in the stock market i always say there's three pillars to uh general building generational wealth i consider the stock market kind of the fourth one um, and by the stock market, I mean total stock market index funds. I think it's very dumb to buy in, uh, individual stocks, but I think it's extremely intelligent to buy uh, to buy into the total stock market index fund. Um, I push basically uh, investment accounts through Fidelity. Uh, that's who I currently use at the moment. But uh, you can go through Charles Schwab. You can go through Guggenheim. You can go through um, uh, Vanguard. There are a lot of different uh, total stock market index funds that you can invest into. But in America, I consider this the fourth one, the fourth pillar to build a generational wealth. You can invest into the uh, total stock market into the index funds uh next in america you can start a business um and you don't necessarily have to worry about people destroying it or you don't necessarily have to worry about the government taking it uh before i go too deep into that however i do want to bring up rosewood in tulsa oklahoma these were cities that were actually affluent black cities in, in the 1920s that were actually uh very affluent uh rosewood i mean i'm sorry tulsa oklahoma at the time was actually the, the richest black city in the world i believe uh the united states military essentially dropped fire bombs on it police officers ran through the city and shot a bunch of people and the u.s army actually dropped uh uh, drop uh, use World War One fighter bombs to drop bombs on the city and blow up Tulsa, Oklahoma. So um, there is a precedent in this country for destroying uh, vast uh, quantities of black wealth in America. Having said that, um, outside of the, outside of some of the extreme examples like that in America, generally speaking, anyone can start a business. In fact, I would say this: it's easier to start a business on LegalZoom.com and start an LLC than it is to apply for a job. It's easier, basically, for you to start a business than it is when you basically uh, put out than, than for you to basically create a resume. And so, as a result, uh, it makes no sense for every American to not start a business. People don't come to America so they can live on food stamps. They don't come to America so they can be on EBT. They don't come to America so they can live in the housing projects. Immigrants come to this country so they can so that they can start businesses and so that their kids can have opportunities that they do not have in their parent country. So every American should start a business. And as a result, um, I personally believe that uh, it makes no sense, once again, to live in this country and to not take advantage of the fact that this is capitalism. In capitalism, you can do anything that you want. So uh, as I said, everybody uh, for, in the United States of America, this country does have a history, unfortunately, of some things that are very dark and sinister and evil. And um, it does kind of take you off. But when you really boils down to it, people, there are a lot of benefits to living in America that a lot of Americans honestly take for granted and they don't realize how truly blessed they are living in this country. I myself lived abroad, uh, I've done projects abroad or whatever, and I have a lot of friends and immigrants who grew up abroad. So as an American, I have a different take on uh, what this country is like because I know what the other side lives like. I've, I've been to the third and the fourth world portions of Haiti. I've been to the third and the fourth world, third, third and the fourth world portions of Africa. And I can tell you right, and the third and fourth world portions of the Caribbean, I can tell you right now, there are people literally killing themselves to come to America and to take advantage of the opportunities that 90% that of us, honestly, for lack of a better word, piss away. So with that, everybody, once again, it's your boy, Chris. This channel of Finance Patience is all about making money. It's all about saving money. It's all about building generational wealth. And I want you guys to financially emancipate yourself from generational poverty. I want you guys as Americans, myself included, to take advantage of all the opportunities that are awarded in this country because a lot of Americans legitimately don't understand it. In this country, people, you can literally become anything that you want. All you have to do is work hard and study. In America, literally one generation, you can go from living in the projects to being a billionaire 
in America, people, the public school system here is the public school system here from K through 12 is free. Take advantage of it. In America, it doesn't matter how poor you are. You can invest in the 401k. You can invest in your Roth IRA. You can invest in the stock market. And you can also invest in the HSA account. Um, in America, uh, it doesn't matter uh, basically where you come from or what you look like. All of everyone here can start a business. So take advantage, people, of the opportunities that America affords itself, okay? Because a lot of times, Americans don't do it. So that, everybody, is your boy, Chris. Uh, take it easy. Uh, I'm about to go enjoy some of this barbecue, some of these fireworks or whatever. So uh, take it easy, everybody. Happy 4th of July. It's your boy, Chris. I'm out. Peace. Peace. Thank you.